All right, check. Train to Busan 2 presents Peninsula. Lots of titles to this movie. At first, it was just Peninsula. Then it was Train to Busan presents Peninsula. Then it was Train to Busan 2. And I don't know what it is. I don't know anything about the production of this movie. But if I had to guess, I'm thinking this movie was not a Train to Busan sequel. I just think it was a Korean zombie movie. And they said, hey, Train to Busan, that was pretty successful. Uh, Let's slap that name on this Peninsula movie. So I think that's what's going on here. Movie was supposed to come out in probably June, July. I'm not too sure. But COVID happened and pushed it. It was actually playing in my local theater for a bit, but I missed the release, but I was able to catch it on Amazon. So Amazon Video has it available to buy. So if you're interested, you can buy this movie for 12 bucks on Amazon or on YouTube. I think the YouTube one is actually cheaper. Look up the prices of both. It might be cheaper on YouTube. If you want to save a couple of dollars, go to YouTube. But if you don't care, just go to Amazon. What is Train to Busan 2 about? Or Peninsula? Well, it's about a ragtag group that come together and go on this mission to recover a lot of money from an isolated city that's been basically overtaken by zombies. So their mission is to steal that money, bring it back, and then they keep a portion of that money. So it's a bit of a heist movie you got here, which is interesting. When I talked about Snyder's Dawn of the Dead, I talked about how he's working on Army of the Dead, and that's going to be a zombie heist movie in a casino. This is a similar vibe to that, but it didn't really give me a heist movie vibe. It gave me an especially a, a Mad Max vibe. And that's what I think is the most interesting thing about this movie. All the way to having this weird cult-like gang and they actually kidnap one of the members of the group and have them wrestle each other. It really felt like uh, Mad Max 3, uh, the Thunderdome one. Uh, That, to me, was the whole interesting part. And there's car chases, and much like Mad Max, it's like as if they they assembled parts of these cars in the middle of an apocalypse. There's, like, blades coming out of them and shit like that. So I thought that was all very cool. The whole Mad Max vibe... Uh, The whole, like, cult-like aspect to it was pretty neat. Uh, I liked all the performances in this movie as well. The lead is pretty badass in here. But unfortunately, this movie is not quite as good as Train to Busan. I would say it's not even really close to coming to as good as Train to Busan. Train to Busan is a very simple yet effective movie. As the title Train to Busan suggests, it's literally about characters going from point A to point B. And that's where Peninsula fails to me. So you're introduced to the plot, your characters, what they have to do. Okay, we got to recover $20 million. And they obtain the money, I'd say 20 minutes into the movie. And it's kind of hard that the main MacGuffin of the film is recovered within 20 minutes now they do lose the money but still it wasn't that big a struggle to get it in the start so it it doesn't really feel like a struggle to reobtain that's the main issue i have with the movie lacked a lot of the heart of the first film the first film had that arc where the the dad is a little selfish and learns to love and sacrifices himself in the end This one doesn't really quite have that beautiful character arc. And that whole middle portion sags a lot. I'd say it sags uh, from the point where they recover the money, which is pretty early on, all the way to where one of the members gets kidnapped and becomes a gladiator. There's a whole portion of there that was just filler. If I had to fix this movie, I feel like the beats are just in the wrong place in the script. I would have had it that they obtained the money at the very end, not that they obtain it 20 or 30 minutes in. That, to me, was the biggest issue. I did like the antagonists in this, so it... I don't know. I, it's a little of a mixed bag for me. Train to Busan is a pretty realistic take on zombies. Not the most realistic zombie movie. It's not like 28 Days Later or 28 Weeks Later. 
but it still is grounded in reality somewhat. And this one is not really... Uh, the car chases, although I did like the idea behind like a Mad Max zombie movie, the car chases felt very fake, and they use a lot, a lot, a lot of CG. So we just got Mad Max Fury Road a few years ago, and after watching that movie, seeing this is just like... Pfft. And even when you've seen movies like Baby Driver, Baby Driver has some great car chases in here. Here, the cars feel like they're in... Uh, Fast and Furious movie. They make impossible jumps. They float. They feel very weightless. And there's even parts where the characters should very much be dead. There's a part where our protagonist bumps, rams into a car, and flies out of the windshield. And you're just like, okay, well, that happened. So, I don't know. It felt a little cartoony to me. A lot of CG... The visual effects here didn't really work, and I did have problems with the visual effects in the original Train to Busan. Most notably, that train explosion sequence pulled me out of it, but uh, they were very few. Um, here, it's more frequent. I think the direction of this movie was a little too ambitious, and as a consequence, everything just feels a little phony. The zombies kind of aren't really the main focus for a good chunk of this movie it is actually the cult members which i do like i feel like there could have been more zombies in this i guess it didn't really feel like a zombie movie for a big portion of the movie when i complain about the visuals a lot of lighting was weird as well this movie happens primarily at night which is weird because we don't see a glimpse of daylight in this movie so it's really hard to get a feel of how long these events are taking place. I was a little confused. How long has this character been in cage and put in this gladiator situation? It feels like the whole movie happens within the span of a few hours when it really shouldn't. And also when it was nighttime, it didn't really feel like nighttime. It kind of felt like evening. You have characters wearing night vision goggles, and you're a little like, why? What's the point? It's like almost clear daylight. But overall, I feel like Train to Busan 2 Peninsula is a bit of a missed opportunity. There's some cool concepts. They talk about North Korea being a bit of a safe haven. I think that's a cool idea because North Korea is such like a secluded country. It's like, yeah, of course it would be the safe haven. Um, uh, there's some cool ideas in here. I just don't think it came all together. Uh, which is unfortunate, but at the same time, I don't know how much of this is a Train to Busan sequel. This could be like the Cloverfield movies, where it's like, hey, we have this movie called The Fucking Garage, or whatever it was called, The Cellar. Let's just slap the name Cloverfield on it. Oh, God Particle? Let's just slap Cloverfield on it. It kind of feels a bit like that. So if you're going in like, expecting Train to Busan 2, this isn't really the movie for you. It's a, I would say it's good at the end of the day, just when you compare it to Train to Busan, it kind of fails, which is unfortunate, but what you gonna do? I want to take a second. I've done 31 zombie movie reviews in 31 days. Not gonna lie, it was a little difficult. I'm a student. I'm studying. School is really, like, ramping up right now, and, uh... It like the reason why I'm doing this channel and all is because I need a little break from school life, you know. So I kind of just go in my garage and talk about movies. So it has been like an outlet for me, I guess. But uh, I'll be very happy to watch a movie that's not zombie related, and I have been. Like I watched Kick Ass a few nights ago, which was pretty fun. Still holds up, but. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, going into this zombie-thon, I had 27 subscribers. Now I'm at like 65, which is crazy to me. So it's not a big number, but I'm proud of the little group we have. So let's keep it up. And uh, watching all these zombie movies, you know, like obviously there's a pandemic going on. And watching all these zombie movies, I imagine like what the coronavirus could have really been like. And it could have been much worse. <laughs> After watching all these zombie movies, like I'm happy we're not living in World War Z right now. So uh, uh, it's been a really polarizing time nonetheless. 
And uh, the reason why I like talking about movies is that it's a place where everyone can come together and just enjoy something that's like not life related, just escape life and enjoy a movie. Yeah, let's just take a bit, reflect on this whole Corona situation. Thank God that it, it's not worse than it what it is right now. I'm a very laid back, spiritual guy. Um, let's just be appreciative. And if you haven't seen all of the movies in this zombie thon, I suggest you do. It's been a fun time doing this. Uh, just want to thank you all. And yeah. It's a little sad if something's coming to an end like this, but it, it's the end of an era. The zombie movie reviews. Bonnie, 무서웠죠.